evaluate the limit. The limit of cosine of 2 theta minus 1 divided by 2 theta squared as theta approaches 0. If we use direct substitution, 2 times 0 would be 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we would get 0 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we would also get 0. So we have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So let's try to use some trig identities to rewrite the function before taking its limit. Let's start off by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. So we will have cosine of 2 theta plus 1 being multiplied to both the top and bottom. When we do that, we will get cosine of 2 theta squared minus 1. And then in the denominator, we will have 2 theta squared times the cosine of 2 theta plus 1. All right, and we know that through a Pythagorean identity with trig, that cosine of 2 theta squared minus 1 is equal to negative sine of 2 theta negative sine squared of 2 theta. So negative sine squared of 2 theta. And then the denominator is going to stay the same. So we have 2 theta squared times cosine of 2 theta plus 1. The next thing that we're going to do in order to try to get sine squared of 2 theta over 2 theta squared is we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 over 4 theta squared. When we do that, the theta squareds cancel out down here, and this 2 becomes a 1, and this 4 becomes a 2. And in the numerator, everything's generally going to stay the same. So we'll have negative sine squared of 2 theta over 4 theta squared. And then the denominator of our rational function will be the cosine of 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2. Next, we can multiply both the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's going to be 2 over cosine 2 theta plus 1, 2 over cosine 2 theta plus 1. And when we do that, all the terms from the bottom rational function cancel out, and we will now have the limit as theta approaches 0 of negative sine of 2 theta squared over 2 theta quantity squared, that's what 4 theta squared is equal to, times 2 over cosine of 2 theta plus 1. And we are taking the limit of this entire uh, function where we're multiplying these two rationals together. And because of that, we can take the limit of the first rational function times the limit of the second one. So let's actually write those. So the limit as theta approaches 0 of negative sine of 2 theta 
over 2 theta, and we can write that as that quantity squared. Because both the numerator and denominator have a square, we can bring it out. Times the limit of 2 over cosine of 2 theta plus 1. And that's as, again, theta approaches 0. So now, when we take the limit of sine of 2 theta over 2 theta, it equals 1, and 1 squared is 1. So, And we still have this negative here. So we have a negative 1 when this is evaluated, and then when we evaluate this one, we will get 2 over, if we substitute 0 in for theta, we'll have 2 times 0, which is 0. The cosine of that is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 2 over 2 which is equal to 1. So negative 1 times 1 is equal to negative 1. Answer choice C.